Welcome back, guys. Good morning. Today is week five, day one. And we're going to start with a very new topic. Actually, it's a topic that we worked with last school year. Before starting with the topic itself, I want to remind you the loss of exponents that we saw in the first partial, okay? So we said that when we had same basis, meaning the same variable, multiplying, we are going to do what with the exponents? You remember that? We copy the variable. And what do we do with the exponents if they're multiplying? A squared times A cubed, that would be A to the, come on, we saw that in the first, uh -huh, exactly, my, uh, Lucia, A to the fifth power, because we add the exponents. Whenever we have the same variable multiplying, it could be like that, or it could be one on the outside, and the other one on the inside of a parenthesis, then this is still a multiplication. And so you're going to add the exponents, okay? Always. That's the most important one that we need to remember right now. Whenever we multiply variables that are the same, we add the exponents. If we divide variables, which we're not gonna see it right now, but we are going to most definitely use it later on, and we're going to subtract wherever the variable is the greatest, okay? So if they're multiplying, we subtract. If you're, we add, sorry, and if we're dividing, we subtract. When? Wherever the variable is greater, the exponent. So the exponent in this case is greater than the denominator. So I'm going to subtract six minus three and place it over here in the denominator. And since there is basically an invisible one over here, in this case, it becomes visible, okay? It's not that you're gonna fill it up with an empty space. No, it becomes visible. Now, if it is the other way around, like we had the, diff, um, the greatest exponent on the numerator, for example, a to the seventh power over a to the square, in this case, we're going to subtract in the numerator. So this is gonna be seven minus two, that's five and it's on the numerator. And as well as in this case, there's an invisible one in here. So we're supposed to have a to the fifth power over one, but I don't need that denominator one. Remember, we don't need denominators one. We need only numerators one. So I can leave it as a to the fifth power. Okay, so this is basically what we need right now, mostly the first one. Okay, now remember to practice those loss of exponents, okay? And the other thing that we need to remember is the law of signs when we are multiplying or dividing, okay? So for multiplying and dividing, remember that if they have same signs, so positive times positive or positive divided by positive, that's gonna be positive. Same thing is if negative, times negative, that's also going to be positive. But if there are different signs like positive times negative or negative times positive, then in that case, in both cases, your answer is gonna be negative. So you need to remember the loss of signs and basically this first rule of exponents, okay? Why? Because we're going to start multiplying, okay? And what are we going to multiply? We're going to multiply something that we defined last school year as polynomial. Does anyone remember what a polynomial is? You remember what a polynomial is? No? No, we saw that last year. Let's see, we have a chat over here. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, a polynomial, let's give the definition of a polynomial. We're going to go ahead to multiply. We're not gonna add or subtract because we saw that last school year. And when we saw the equations, we basically did what we need to in additions and subtractions of polynomials. So a polynomial is the sum 
or difference between two or more monomials. Okay, it is the sum or the difference, the addition or the subtraction between two or more monomials. So second definition will be, what is a monomial? A monomial is any real number, any variable, or the product between a real number and the variable or variables. Yes, it's not just one variable, it could be more than one variable. Or variables with real number exponents. No, with whole numbers, because it's only positive. So with whole number exponents, okay? So in other words, the examples of monomials are a monomial to be the number three, a monomial could be the variable X, but a monomial could also be the multiplication between three and X, but also it could be three times X times Y, and that's a still a monomial. Or the variables can also have exponents, but exponents need to be positive. It had to be whole numbers, okay? So all of these are monomials. If you have, for example, x over y, that is, not, that is not a multiplication. This is a division. So this is not a monomial. This is a division between two monomials, the monomial x and the monomial y. But itself, it cannot be called a monomial. Now, a polynomial is the sum or the difference. Remember, sum is addition and difference is subtraction. So. A polynomial could be, for example, three plus X. That is a polynomial. Or three X squared minus X plus 11. That is also a polynomial, okay? Now, polynomials, remember, they have different type of names, okay? So it could be a binomial because it has two terms a trinomial because it has three terms, a monomial because it has one term, or from four more, you're just gonna call it a polynomial. So another polynomial could be, for example, x to the fifth power negative plus x to the fourth power minus x minus one. It has four terms. This is a polynomial. This, this is a monomial, sorry. This is another monomial. This is another monomial. And this is another monomial. So every monomial in a polynomial is going to be called term. So this polynomial has four terms. This one that's in blue, it's underlined in blue, has one, two, three. That's why its specific name is trinomial but it is also a polynomial. It's like you guys, you're students, but Gustavo is a particular name. Jose Mario is another particular name. So same thing. Trinomial is a particular name of a polynomial. Binomial, because it has two terms, is another particular name, okay? And monomial is another particular name for this polynomials, but all of them are polynomials, okay? So we clear so far, we refreshed our mind with that, with what a polynomial, a monomial, and the specific names are. Okay, so let's begin with what we actually want. And we're gonna start with an easy one. We're gonna start, for example, with negative x, multiplying three x squared negative, plus one. I'm multiplying a monomial times a polynomial. How do I know that this is a multiplication? Because I have a parenthesis. And remember, every single time that you see a parenthesis, there is a distributive property that has to be done, okay? It has to be solved with a distributive property. 
Okay, so remember as PEMDAS, first parentheses and then multiplications. So we're gonna see if we can simplify anything on the inside of the parentheses. Do we have any like terms? No, so we go ahead and do the multiplication with the straight property. Now, the term on the outside is going to multiply every single term on the inside of the parentheses. And here is where we're going to apply the laws of exponents and the rules of signs, okay? Now, remember, variables that do not have an exponent actually have an invisible one exponent. Variables that do not have a coefficient in front of it, a number in front of it, it actually has a coefficient of one. And when we multiply term by term, we always multiply coefficient with coefficient and variable with variable, if they're the same variable, okay? So negative x times negative 3x squared. So negative has an invisible one, so negative times negative, positive three. We copy the variable because it is the same variable. And since you're being multiplied, we add the exponents. So invisible one plus two, that is? Three. Three. Now negative x times positive one. Negative one x. Negative one x or only negative? x. Are these two like terms? Can we add them or subtract them? Just like when we had equations, if they are not the same variable with the same exponent, could we add them up or subtract them in this case? No, because they're not like terms. For them to be like terms, this has to have a three, but it does not have a three, so it is not a like term. So I can say that this is my final answer in the multiplication of a monomial and this polynomial. Are we clear with that so far? Yeah? Okay, let's do another one, another easy one. Okay, then we're gonna increase the complexity, okay? So we're going to say, for example, 2x put a square, y parentheses, 4x put a square also, minus 3xy plus y put a square. What is the first thing that we need to do? To observe the observe, sorry, to observe the parentheses and see if inside the parentheses we have any like terms. If we have like terms, we simplify. If not, then we go ahead and do the discrete property. So do we have any like term on the inside of the parentheses? No. No. So we're gonna go do the discrete property and this whole thing, everything on the outside, is going to multiply every single term on the inside of the parentheses, okay? So 2x squared y times 4x squared eight x eight x to the fourth power to the fourth power y. Why? Very good. Why? Because two times four is eight. X squared times X squared, they're the same variable. So we have the exponent, two plus two is four. And since the here does not have no Y, we just copy it, okay? Now, two X squared Y times negative three X Y. Negative six X Y. Negative six X. six X squared. And y squared. Negative. I mean six. to the cube. To the uh -huh. cube. <laughs> to the cube and y to the square. Very good. Be careful with that. Okay. Now the last one. Two x square y times y square. Mm -hmm. 
complex square y times y squared? 2y2 square. 2? Uh -huh. 2? Again, pay attention. 2x squared y times y squared. How much is that? 2xy to the cube. You're missing something in there. x squared. Uh, 2x squared because you copy it just as it is because there's no variable x on the last term. And then you go ahead and say y cubed because you added this to with the invisible one. Can we simplify that? Can we simplify any term with this ones? Yes, Asala? So that means that we can't add the exponents if it's a different um, <clears throat> variable. For example, x and y, they're different variables, but they did have uh, an exponent. So we can't because they're nope because you're different variables. It's like, for example, if I'm adding the amount of girls and the amount of boys that I have in eighth grade, I will be adding Isabella plus Natalie plus Larissa plus Maria plus Victoria and so on with all the girls. And then on the boys, I'm gonna be adding Gustavo, Jose Mario, Alejandro, Arno, Laura, and so on. But I cannot go ahead and say Isabella plus Arnold plus Natalie, plus Diego, because I'm not adding the whole thing. I'm adding specific, okay? Same thing for goes here. Variable goes specific. The X with the X, if they have the same exponent, I mean, if they have their multiplication, then you add the exponents. If not, you cannot do it, okay? Now, over here, there's no like term. How do I know? Because all of them have different exponents. Now, my question would be, what if, what if I had over here, a square, 8x to the fourth power y squared minus 6x cubed y squared plus 2x squared y cubed. Do I have like terms in there? This is y squared and this is y squared. Y squared. Are those like terms? Yes or no? Yes? No. Because Why the not? Whole term, the whole term has to be like term. Because the whole thing has to be a like term. In other words, both variables have to have exactly the same exponent, not just one. So in order for this to be like terms, this has to be a three. So this has x cubed y squared, and this has x cubed y squared, or this has to have an exponent four. So both of them have x to the fourth power y squared. If they do not have the same two variables with the same two exponents, they are not like terms, even though one of the variables are exactly the same with exactly the same exponents, okay? They have to have everything in common, okay? Everything in common for them to be considered like terms. So in this case, they were not like terms. And this is my final answer. Easy peasy breezy lemon squeezy, right? Multiplication of a monomial times a polynomial. Yeah? Do you remember we saw that? Do we have any question about this? Yeah, like the constant, they don't matter, right? What if? No. Okay. No, the constants don't matter. Let's do one more. One more of this side, okay? So let's say that we got now two, no, no, two, five. Five y times three x to the cube minus y plus four plus three y. Okay, what is the first thing that I need to do in here? Find the like terms if they are any. You see the inside of the parenthesis and see if there is any like term. Do we have any like term on the inside of the parenthesis? Yes or no? Yes? Which yes. ones are they? 
Negative y and 3y. Negative y and 3y. Very good. So I'm going to simplify that. Since I'm doing nothing with the 5y, I'm just going to copy it down here. I'm not adding the 3x cubed, so I'm copying the 3x cubed over here. How much is negative y plus 3y? 2y. Positive 2y. And I'm doing nothing with the 4, so I copy the 4. I have no more like terms, so I go ahead and do this ready property. And I multiply the 5y times everything that I have on the inside of the parentheses. Okay, 5y times 3x cubed. 15x cubed y. Very good, 15x cubed y. Why do I copy both variables as they are? Because they're not like terms. So I cannot multiply them. So I just go ahead and copy them. But I was able to multiply the five and the three. Okay, I was able to multiply that. Now, five y times two y. 10 y squared. 10 y squared because I multiplied the five times the two and y times y. Invisible one and invisible one, that would be y squared. And 5y times 4? 20y. So plus 20y. So you see, they need to be exactly the same variable with exactly the same exponent in order for us to multiply them and add the exponent. If not, we just go ahead and copy it in there. Questions so far? No? Okay, let's see now the very last part, and that will be like the introduction to the next uh, complexity part of the exercises that we're doing. So we multiply a monomial times a polynomial. What are you going to call this? How do you call that? This is a multiplication of a monomial times a polynomial or a polynomial times a monomial. How do you call that? How do you call that? What is this? Two terms? How do we call two terms? A binomial. A binomial multiplying another binomial. binomial. Okay. So how do we solve it? Exactly the same way that we did with this one, okay? There are two ways of solving it. I'm gonna show you both ways and I'm gonna show you which is the way that I rather do, okay? So one way, I think it's a longer way, so I don't like that way, but if you wanna do it that way, that's okay. So I will copy the first term, x, and I'm gonna multiply times the second parenthesis, okay? Then I'm gonna copy the second term of the first parenthesis, I'm gonna say plus one, and I'm gonna multiply it again times the second parenthesis, okay? And I'm gonna do a monomial multiplying a binomial and another monomial multiplying a binomial. And I'm gonna do the distorted property in here. Okay, so I'm going to have x times x, x times x, 2x, x times x, x, x squared, mm -hmm. x squared, I'm not adding, I'm multiplying, x times negative 3, negative 3x, negative 3x, 1 times x, X. x plus x and one times negative three negative three negative three and now i look for the like terms and simplify if possible usually when i multiply a binomial times a binomial the middle terms are my uh, like terms okay so i copy the first term x squared how much is negative three x plus x Negative 2x. Negative 2x minus 3. 
And this is method one, okay? Why I don't like it? Because if I have a trinomial, multiplying a trinomial, then I would have to separate it three times. And as, as terms, it goes added up, that will be the many times that I need to be separating it. So that's why I don't like this second method, this first method. Let's go with the second method. Second method, I'm gonna copy the original exercise. Second method is to go ahead and do the sturdy property from the beginning. What does that mean? That I'm gonna multiply the first term of the first parenthesis times everything on the second parenthesis. And then I'm gonna multiply the second term of the first parenthesis times everything inside the second parenthesis, okay? And I'm gonna do it all at once without doing this separation. And I'm gonna say x times x times x. X squared. X squared, okay. X times negative three. X times negative three. Negative three X. Negative, negative three X. And I finish multiplying the first term times the second parenthesis. Now I go with the second term. One times X. One X. One X or only X. One times negative three. Negative three. Negative three. Negative three. And I look for the like terms, which they're, like I told you, the middle ones, the terms in the middle. And I go ahead and simplify. So this is x squared, negative 3x plus x is negative 2x minus 3. And that's it. I finished. This is method one. This is method two. You could use whichever method you want, but I rather use method number two because it's easier. Okay, you do everything at once. You don't need to separate anything and you just go ahead with it. Questions about this? No? We're good? We're clear? Let's place the topics name. We have a chat in here. Okay, no questions. What is today's topic name? It's a read property. Mm, but what is the distorted property per se? What do you do when you use a distorted property? Using the distributed pure property to solve polynomials. Mm -hmm. But what did you do? Multiplying. Very good. Multiplying. Multiplying. What did we multiply? Multiplying. Polynomials. Polynomials. And that is the topic for today. Do you have any question whatsoever for this part? No? We're gonna continue to practice in our next class with multiplications of polynomials, bigger polynomials, not just monomials, okay? Spe specifically binomials, we're gonna multiply. No questions? We're good, we're clear. Okay then, so basically this is the class for today.